Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over radio for the Hornet. If you press on your Hornet in the mission editor and press the pink button, you can change the preset frequencies for all the different channels, and you can also choose if you want AM or FM modulation. Keep in mind, the radios also have the ability to type in a manual frequency, so you don't necessarily need to have preset channels. All right, now let's go over the radios. The radio for the Hornet is the ARC-210, and it has two of them. The radio can do AM and FM, and it operates in the megahertz range. It can do manual frequency or preset channels, and you can also use it for navigation. You power it with the volume switches. If you have the volume switches all the way off, the radio will be off. Off. and if you turn it on obviously it turns radio on and you can see this light come on here these lights show the channel for each radio right now I'm on channel 1 but I can use my mouse wheel to scroll over to the different channels if you go past channel 20 it goes to G which is the guard channel, which is 243 megahertz. And then if you go past that, it goes to M, which allows you to dial in a manual frequency like this. For example, let's say I wanted to do 310 megahertz, I could do it like this. If you set it to C in the manual, it says it doesn't do anything in DCS. And if you set it to S, it sets it to maritime mode. And it says you can tune it into maritime channels from 1 to 28 and 60 to 88. However, I'm not really sure if it's really implemented in DCS and I've never seen anybody do it before. So you're probably just going to be using either the channels here or M for manual frequency. You can also change the frequency of any channel if you want. For example, if I want to change channel 10 to 261, I just go to channel 10, type in 261, and click enter like that. If this menu goes away and you want to bring it back, you can just click on either of these levers. I can click this one for radio 1 and this for radio 2. You have some options here. If you press this, it will allow you to listen to the guard frequency at the same time. If you press this, it'll turn off the squelch and you're going to hear a static noise. And you can press it to turn the squelch back on. The cipher and menu buttons don't do anything and you can press this to switch between AM and FM. You can also adjust the brightness control here. Keep in mind, if you set either of the radios to ADF mode, it'll automatically turn the squelch off, and you have to turn the ADF off to turn the squelch back on. Now let's go over the navigation system for the radio. First, you need to find a navigation beacon in the megahertz range. The most common one you'll probably do in DCS is a VOR station. A VOR station is a hexagon on the map like this. And if you zoom in, you can see this is 113.6 megahertz. So what I do is select any radio I want, and I'm going to go to the manual frequency. I'm going to dial in 1136 and click enter. You should be able to hear some Morse code. I'm going to bring up my navigation display, and once you hear the Morse code, you can set that radio to ADF. I'm on radio 1, so I'm going to set it to ADF. And once you do that, you should see a circle on your navigation display that will point to the radio beacon. If you decide to stop using the radio for navigation, then make sure you set the ADF switch to off, and make sure you turn the squelch back on so you don't hear the static E noise. The last thing I'll go over for the radio is the MIDS radio. This is technically part of the data link, but I figured I'd go over it in the radio video too. If you press the data link button, it will bring up the first data link menu, so you want to press it again to go to the second menu for link 16 and you can hold the on off button to make sure link 16 is turned on and you can see voice A and voice B here. If you want to turn on either of these you can select the one you want to turn on and then just select any channel you want. I'll do channel 5 and press enter and there's no way to really tell but now voice A is turned on and tuned into channel 5. You can adjust the volume for the mids over here, mids A and mids B volume. Also, the manual said if you're going to use the mids radio, make sure to keep this switch set to norm. If you put it to zero or hold, it said it will erase some kind of encryption settings and it won't work anymore. That was how to use the radios. Now I'll just go over how to communicate with them. In DCS, there's two ways to communicate with the radio. You can communicate with DCS's built-in voice chat, which is how you talk to other people on a multiplayer server, or you can communicate with the communication menu, which is this thing up here, which is how you talk to AI in your mission. Now, if your mission has easy communication turned on, then it's really easy. All you do is press backslash on your keyboard, and you can talk to whoever you want, and it will automatically tune your radio for you. If the mission you're flying in does not have easy communication turned on, then you're going to have to dial in the proper frequency or channel into the radio. And then you can hold right alt and press backslash to open the menu for radio 1. And you can do right control backslash to open the menu for radio 2. If you want to use DCS's built-in voice chat to communicate, then you have to bind some keybinds. The radio bindings for the regular radios are COM1 and 2. And make sure you have the VoIP 
one binded for the voice chat and for the mids radios it's comm switch mids a and b that was radio for the hornet thanks for checking out this video and i'll see you later